this is Roaming Required on YouTube. And in this video today, we're going to show you all around Nuremberg in Germany. So come with us while we discover lots of things for you to do on a short weekend break. So, are you ready? Let's go! Welcome to Nuremberg. Nuremberg is the second largest city in the German federal state of Bavaria after its capital, Munich. During the Renaissance, Nuremberg was one of Europe's great centres for politics, trade and art. To get to grips with this, we head to Nuremberg's museums for a quick overview of about a thousand years of the city's history. The city museum is housed in Fembo House, Nuremberg's only surviving large, late Renaissance merchant's house. Inside is a speedy tour in just 30 minutes, which looks to cover all of the milestones of the city's history. If you have time, you can explore the museum further with an additional four floors of interesting artwork and history. The National Museum in Nuremberg is also worthy of some of your time, with several pieces by Dürer, Rembrandt, and among other things, a 200,000-year-old hand axe. Albrecht Dürer is Germany's most famous painter, and as a former resident of the city, Nuremberg is proud to call him her son. Self-portrait with a silver pencil. And what is special about a silver pencil, you can't erase it. So you can't make any change yourself. So he did it in one step. Can you imagine this? His piece, A Young Hare, dates back to 1502 and is one of the most famous examples of Dürer's study of nature and animals. This modern sculpture is a provocative and figurative portrayal of Dürer's young hare painting. If you look closely, you can see that the hare has engulfed the artist. All that remains of Dürer is his foot. This is the central market square of Nuremberg. It's home to the annual and rather epic Christmas market. Outside the festive season, it's home to a daily market of fresh produce, including gingerbread. So we have them and they come out, of course not real human beings, these are wooden puppets. So then they come by out every day at 12 o'clock and pass by Charles IV to honor him and to say thank you that he had raised the status of the city as well. The market is also home to Frauenkirch, a church on the eastern side of the main market. This brick Gothic church was built at the time of Charles IV, Holy Roman Emperor, between 1352 and 1362. Inside the church, many sculptures remain. Some survived World War II bombing by being protected in the art bunker. But we'll talk about that later. Located behind me is Frau Kirsch. This is the Church of Our Lady, uh, located here in Nuremberg. Uh, here's some fun facts uh, that you might be interested in. The clock face uh, was taken out during the World War II uh, bombing campaign, stored in the art bunker, uh, which by the way you should go visit because it's awesome. Oh, uh, that's a statue of King Charles IV, located up there, which is what the puppets will come out and uh, kind of dance around him a day every, every day. Oh, the Christmas markets is lo located right here. So if you've if you've come to Nuremberg for the Christmas markets, it's located right here. Would you like to see a beautiful fountain? There it is. Isn't that a beautiful fountain? <laughs> Here's another fun fact. <laughs> that fountain was covered in a wood box during World War II to, to kind of protect it. And then uh, to protect it even more, it was encased in concrete. That's pretty interesting. There are several stories about the two brass rings embedded in the fence surrounding the fountain, one of which that says good luck comes to those who spin them. A medieval law regulated brewers and sellers to have their own beer cellar for fermentation and storing of beer. It's thanks to this regulation that produced the historical rock cut cellars that remain in the city to this day. Guided tours are available, with groups descending four floors underground to discover just some of the 20,000 square meters of cellars that remain in the city today. You will see the rest of the cellars are more or less still in the original form. At the end of the 14th century in Nuremberg, there were more than 40 breweries for a population of less than 30,000 people. The history of Nuremberg is inseparable from the history of beer. 
the tour of the historic underground rock cut cellars ends at Orfstad Brewery and the Whiskey Barreling Room. So if you're so inclined, you can pop into the bar to sample their whiskey or Nuremberg's famous rock beer. It's another beautiful day here in Nuremberg. Today, up on today's schedule, we have the Nazi rally grounds and the documentation center, which uh, should cover most of the history of the Third Reich here in Nuremberg. So we get to understand a little bit more about the history of that area. Also on the agenda for today is the historic art bunker, uh, which is where priceless works of art were stored during the Allied bombing campaign here in Nuremberg in the 1940s. Alright, so we're on the tram using our Nuremberg cards, which will give us two days worth of free travel on all public transport. Nuremberg acknowledges its past and as a place that held great significance during the Third Reich. The city was chosen by the Nazi party to be the site of the annual Nuremberg rallies, which became huge Nazi propaganda events after Hitler rose to power in 1933. The documentation centre was built inside the unfinished shell of Albert Speer's Congress Hall. Never completed, it was meant to hold an audience of 50,000 people. However, what you see today includes the work of Gunther Dominique. He designed a glass stake that was driven through the massive structure, permanently disrupting the building's geometry. Tickets include the use of a rather cumbersome audio guide, which doesn't enable the use of headphones unlike many other guides. Available in seven languages, it provides the necessary insight into the exhibition and translates the information panels and boards, which are predominantly in German. So in this section, it talks about the Nuremberg trials and that is predominantly the top 24 uh, leaders of the Nazi party that went to trial following the end of the Second World War and all of those trials happened here in Nuremberg. It's, uh, it's really moving. Mm. We are very fortunate that it's so quiet here today that we basically have the whole place to ourselves um, but that doesn't take away any of the special meaning of this place. The park behind the documentation centre leads into the rally grounds, where over four square kilometres can be explored further at your leisure, including a visit to the German stadium or the Zeppelin field. For us, the tram ride back to town was quiet and reserved as we sat and processed the information we'd heard. Shortly after World War II began, a unique art depot was established in the ancient bedrock cellars directly under Nuremberg Castle. This large medieval beer cellar was repurposed to shelter looted and Nuremberg's irreplaceable art treasures, as much as 24 metres underground. Here they survived intact from the heavy air raids by the Allies, which basically levelled the entire city. Housed in the art bunker was the Imperial Regalia, pieces from the National Museum, including the Edifel, the oldest surviving terrestrial globe, which dates back to 1491. It doesn't include the Americas or Australia, which were yet to be discovered. Destruction experienced by Nuremberg resulted in debris in volume that's larger than the Great Pyramid of Giza, which you can see depicted in these models. This is the memoriam to the Nuremberg Trials. Back in 1946, 21 military and political leaders from the Third Reich came here and stood trial for their crimes. From November 1945 to October 1946, an international courtroom in room 600 was set up to prosecute leading representatives from the National Socialist regime. A visit to this judicial building includes a comprehensive exhibition with historical information about the court proceedings before the International Military Court. If you want to fully experience this exhibition, you will need to allow yourself a few hours to get through it. Guided tours are available on Sundays in German. 
For non-German speakers, there's also a handy audio guide, which provides translation of information panels as well as sound of the original film and sound recordings, which is shown in the exhibition. Our final stop is The Way of Human Rights, a monumental outdoor sculpture that was opened in October 1993. It consists of two slabs on the ground, a cypress oak tree, an arch, and 27 8 meter high white pillars. Each is engraved with an article from the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in German and in another language. The open air installation has major symbolic value and has inspired numerous human rights activities in the city. As always, if you aren't already subscribed to our channel, please do so now. And don't forget to click the little bell icon so you get a notification when the new video goes live.